Hello and welcome. Today, we have several interesting stories lined up for your enjoyment including one about an entitled mom who demanded her daughter not take her college scholarship to care for her child. Am I the idiot for cancelling the entire trip after finding out that my husband hid my daughter's passport? My husband and I have been together for three years. He has three kids from his previous relationship and I have one. She's the oldest, 17. He's a dedicated man, puts God first, and loves everyone. My husband always complains that my daughter doesn't spend time with her step-siblings or him but she has reasons for that and those reasons are school, health issues, and work. She does her best to spend as much time with them as she can. She on the other hand complains that her stepdad tells her to basically take on the role of a babysitter whenever she's with her step-siblings. My husband denied that and said that my daughter was making up excuses to not have to spend time with his kids. For this issue, I figured that a family trip is what the family needs to get together and spend more time around each other. My husband liked the idea but said that his kids are now uncomfortable around my daughter because of her attitude and suggested we let her stay home and have the house all to herself since that's what she always wanted. I told him it's best that we all go but he kept complaining till I snapped and told him to stop. I booked, paid, for the whole family. However, my daughter told me she couldn't find her passport. We turned the house upside down looking for it but couldn't find it. My husband said maybe it was a sign from God that we should let her stay home so the trip wouldn't turn into a disaster. I ignored his comment but later while I was cleaning his office I found the passport, tucked away in the third drawer under a ton of papers. I was floored by this, I confronted him with it and he swore he had no idea why or how the passport got there. I checked the upstairs camera and saw him enter my daughter's room. That was it for me, I screamed my head off at him and then cancelled the whole trip completely. He started arguing saying I overreacted and that he didn't want his kids to be miserable on the trip and that willing to apologize to my daughter if and when I reconsider my decision regarding the cancellation of the trip because my stepkids will be devastated but I said it was final and that it was done. He become cold and distant and said that he wants to take some time to do some fasting and get guidance from God about how he should deal with the disrespect and control I had displayed lately. Am I the idiot for cancelling it altogether? And now we are going to hear comments from the readers. He can't use your daughter as free childcare for his children so he intentionally alienates her from his family, and yes, I said his family because it is very apparent he does not consider your family his family. Let's see what he's done just in your post alone. Your almost adult daughter has valid reasons why she cannot spend more time, as he wants, with the step-siblings. He does not think her needs are equal or even important. Your husband orders her to babysit. She is not now nor will ever be his beck and call servant. You wanted, booked, and paid for a family vacation. He does not see her as family, since he made excuses and complained that she could not go against his wishes. He does not think she deserves to go on the family vacation because he clearly does not see her as his family. When he could not manipulate you into what he wanted, he forced the issue himself and then allowed you to tear through the house causing you and your daughter stress while knowing 100% what he did caused this and he had no problem with that. He used God's will as an excuse for something he intentionally did. Does he think he's a conduit for God or God himself? He sounds like a narcissist. He lied about what he did, and when you called him out, he continued to lie to you and when you had proof and he ran out of valid lies. He twisted it all around saying that you are the one overreacting. When he still couldn't lie, argue, or manipulate what he wanted from you, he then turned to give you the cold shoulder as a form of punishment to you. Oh you've hurt my little feelings. You must adjust your ways to make me feel better. Even though this is all my fault and my own doing, I cannot be held responsible for that. Your husband wants to control you. What you do and what you want. Your husband wants to control your daughter what she should be spending her time on and forcing her to do things she cannot do. When he cannot easily do that, he uses manipulation and lying in order to accomplish it. When he is then held responsible for his actions, he turns it around on you. When that doesn't work, he throws a temper tantrum. He did not marry you because he wanted a wife and stepdaughter. He was looking for two females to boss around and do his bidding in God's name, Amen. 
Am I the idiot for filing a report again my co-worker after I found him looking through my purse? There's this co-worker, Martin, 31 male who always forgets where he leaves his stuff. He always forgets his phone charger at home and borrows mine to use. I don't mind lending him my charger, he's a nice person and I love maintaining a good relationship with my co-workers, especially male co-workers. The other day, I was in the restroom then when I walked back into the office, I saw Martin with both hands inside my purse literally looking through it. I was shocked. I have highly personal stuff that I carry in my purse. I freaked out and snatched my purse out of his hands asking what he was doing. He got nervous and said he was looking for my charger. I asked why he thought it was okay for him to look through my purse and he said that, since I always lend him my charger, he thought I wouldn't mind if he looked for it in my purse when he couldn't ask me because I was out of the office and he needed it right then. I told him he violated my privacy and disrespected my boundaries. I went and filed a report with the company's headquarters after telling them what happened. They said it was unacceptable and promised to deal with it. Martin got in trouble for this and he and my co-workers were pissed saying I overreacted and went way overboard by reporting this situation. My female co-worker told me to get over myself and stop crying victim over a simple misunderstanding. I felt very guilty after. Now, I think I might have blown this out of proportion and overreacted. The comments reacting to this topic. It seems a bit ridiculous that people would not understand as if they never had their privacy violated before, or seen examples of it. It doesn't have to be egregious. I doubt anyone would start looking through people's cupboards and drawers while visiting someone else's home. Sounds more like the co-workers were just using the situation for social points rather than any moral position. I am pretty sure they have lines as well and it's not inconceivable to anyone who is not self-centered that a purse that houses typically personal information, personal items, credit cards, etc., would be off limits to others without permission. I personally feel uncomfortable going into purses even if you ask me to. If they still don't feel that way, ask them if they would be okay if you slipped under the bathroom stalls to have a conversation with them while they poop. I mean, get over yourself, everyone poops right? Yeah not the idiot. Second reply. Tell your female co-workers that if they are not ready, right then and there, to hand their purse over to him so he can dig through it, they don't get to tell you that you overreacted and hold on to it. Tell your female co-workers, hand your purse to him and tell him to dig through it. No removing tampons, no taking out medicine, nothing, right here and right now. If you aren't comfortable with him doing that, then you don't get to say a thing to M.E. about not wanting a man rummaging through my personal stuff. He may not have done it maliciously but it was stupid and thoughtless and he should be grateful that you didn't push to get him fired. Not even my husband digs through my purse although I honestly wouldn't care. It's personal. This wasn't pulling open a desk drawer at the office that he knew you kept it in and that you'd given him the okay for. This was digging through your personal belongings. Not okay in the slightest and if he wasn't bright enough to pick up this basic fact around the age of five, you definitely needed to have someone higher up clue him in. Not the idiot. Am I the idiot for telling my siblings the real reason why my parents got divorced? I, 22M, have three other siblings, 18M, 15M, 12F. Our parents are no longer together because of my mom's, 42F, infidelity. She was seeing my best friend's dad. When my father found out he kicked her out, she ended moving with her AP and broke two marriages. This all happened six years ago and my siblings saw my dad as the bad guy who kicked their mother out. My 15M and 12F decided to live with my mom and dad only had them on weekends. My 18M stayed with us because he was closer to my dad already but he didn't know what caused our family to fall apart and also seemed to resent my dad. I visited my mom as often as I could and she seemed happy to have me but I was the only one who knew what happened. My dad never talked to my mother and never let my siblings know why they split even if he had to be seen as the bad guy who kicked her out and my mom never took any responsibility for what she did to our family. They get along with Jeff, mom's husband. I did but lost a lot of respect for him when he went after my mom. My dad will get married to Rose this October 21st, my late grandma's birthday and he told my siblings that he wished to have them with him, they started being so mean to him and basically shaming him for getting married and accusing him of cheating because he started dating Rose a long ago. Even my 18M did, they really hate Rose, 
Cause she came into our lives like six months after my mom was kicked out. So I asked them to stop. My dad isn't confrontational so he told me to leave it like that. They started accusing Rose of being the reason my parents fell apart but I told them that. The reason was my mom's infidelity. Their faces turned red and asked me if I was joking but I said no. They got back to my mom's house and two days later they were back asking to stay with my dad full time. Apparently they confronted her and her husband about what happened. I called my mom to see if everything is okay but she didn't answer. I went to her house and she was distant. We didn't talk much about it. Her husband texted me later to call me the idiot for telling my siblings about my mom's affair and they seem to hate her now. I know. It's hard for my mom now because she loves us but my dad shouldn't be seen as an evil person, and she as the great flawless parent. Rose shouldn't be seen as a homewrecker when my mom is. Am I the idiot for letting them know? The replies. Your mom and her affair partner have been lying to your siblings for years. They deserve the consequences of, 1, their affair and, 2, their subsequent lies over years. 3. Not defending your dad or Rose. If they had wanted to keep the status quo and keep their betrayal and dishonesty a secret, they should have made an effort to welcome Rose and try to discourage your siblings from vilifying Rose and your dad. Second reply. Dad really seems to be a pretty stellar dad to his kids, and a really fair fellow to boot. I hope both he and Rose have all the joy they missed out on, to make up for time wasted on people who weren't worth it. May they never have any concern of trust together, ever. May they have a very long, healthy, and happy life together. And may they never think of those who betrayed their trust except at moments of meeting them and even then only have thoughts of pity. Like when you see a wave smoothing over an abandoned sand castle. May the mother and Jeff each know repeatedly the intimate betrayal that they have suffered upon others. May they remain constant reminders of the pain they have visited in others' lives. May they never part ways despite wishing to more and more month by month and may the depth of their misery be matched only by the length of time they experience it. Also, may they have a constant case of athlete's foot that remains at the stage where it's insatiably itchy, and may they have a new, but curable, transmitted friend at every, frequent doctor's visit due to their repeated betrayals of each other. Am I the idiot for telling my mom that I won't put my future on pause, just because she decided to, start over? I, 18 female, am my mom's, 41 female, first and oldest child. She and my dad weren't together and I lived with him from a very young age because she was busy with her career. So, while she was around for my younger years, she wasn't as present as she told me she would have liked to be. She has a husband, 38 male. He's a nice guy and he treats her like a queen so I'm happy she's met him. He and my mom wanted a kid of their own so they ended up having my little brother earlier this year. I love my brother, and I like spending time with him, but I'm very aware that our age gap is going to make a normal sibling relationship a bit unachievable. I was a dual-enrolled college-slash-high school student, so I got my associates at the same time I got my HS diploma. The college I transferred to has a study abroad program that I got a full-ride scholarship for. I'm set to go next year and I'm seriously so excited. My dad was really happy for me when I told him and so was my stepdad but my mom didn't seem all that excited about it. She told me later that she doesn't think me doing school in another country is a good idea. I thought at first maybe it was just her worrying about me being alone or something so I tried to reassure her by telling her my friend was in the same program so we'd be together. She clarified that her biggest concern was how much time I'd be spending away from home seeing as how it wouldn't be practical for me to fly back for all the holidays I would have visited if I were to be in the country. She said my going away during my little brother's earliest years was going to make it difficult for the two of us to really know each other the way we would if I were around. I told her that it's not like I'd never come back or anything, and by the time I'm home again he probably won't even be in school yet, so I'd still be around for his early years. She insisted that it wouldn't be the same and that I should want to stay here anyway because a good sister wouldn't want to leave her little brother. I got upset at that and told her that I never asked to be a sister, especially not this far into my life, and that it was not fair of her to want me to put my future on pause all because she decided she needed to start over again with motherhood. That really upset her, and I didn't feel like arguing anymore so I just went over to my dad's house and I've been here ever since. I did tell him what happened and he said that I should choose what I feel is best for myself, 
and no choice I make about this would make me a bad older sister or even a bad daughter. That did make me feel a little better about it but I still feel kind of awful. I love my mom, and I love my brother too, but I don't want to throw away this opportunity. Still though, am I the idiot for what I said to her? The replies. Wow. That's some incredible selfishness from your mom. It's blatantly ridiculous to ask you not to pursue your life so that she can play happy families and make up for her sense of guilt that she wasn't around much in your early years and giving up a full ride scholarship for it. That would be an insane sacrifice. Secondly, you're going to be more like an aunt than a sibling anyway, and no one would argue that an aunt has to stay in the country just to fly back and see their nephew every single holiday. Finally, if you come home after studying, you're still going to be back while he's quite young. If you want to bond with him while he's still young, there is time. Your, because she wanted to start over with motherhood, line is pretty damn blunt, but it sounds like the truth, and sometimes you've gotta state the truth plainly when someone is trying to manipulate you. She just said that you are basically a bad person for doing something you're more than entitled to do, to guilt trip you about her own slightly messed up emotional needs. That's really quite awful and deserved a blunt response to tell her that it's not okay. Not the idiot. Second reply. Not the idiot. You're 18 and going to college. Whatever picture your mom has in her head. Has no relationship to reality. You aren't going to be around. That's it. Why? Because that's your job right? Your job is to explore. Find your place in the world. I don't know if your mom is trying to create the family that she missed out on by working so much when you were a kid or if she's trying to bond with you via your brother. But that isn't going to happen. That's okay. You are 18 years older than your sibling. If you have kids, he is more likely to see them as peers than he is to see you as one. That doesn't mean you can't have family time together. Heck, you can have family time when you are studying abroad. Planes go both ways. Fifth story. Am I the idiot for not making a former friend a baby blanket for her newborn? Every year I make hats and scarves for people I love or for homeless people. What I do is I give up a vice. Starbucks for me. A few months before it gets cold, save up money and buy yarn. I make the hats and give them away for free. A friend of mine asked for some hats and scarves for a couple of friends as gifts and I gave her 10 rainbow hats and scarves. I found out she sold them all for $20 a pop. The only reason I found out, is because I saw someone with it on her building and I commented on how it looked good. Oh. XYZ, insert my friend's name, makes these and they are very affordable. I'm going to get some more for my family. I'm not mad she sold them. And I know I can't be mad when it's no longer in my possession but I think I'm more hurt than anything especially since I saved up and I just give them out, out the kindness of my heart. She asked if I had any more and I told her that I dropped the remaining off at a local church. It's true. She then asked if I could make a blanket for her daughter and I told her no. She asked why and I told her the reason is that she lied to me and was selling something that I didn't intend to sell. She went on about how she needed the money and since I wasn't selling them and didn't really want them, she could sold them and I'm an idiot for not making the blanket because we have been friends forever. I don't think I'm an idiot but wanted an outside opinion. Am I being dramatic? No hate, please. The replies. Not the idiot. Your friend is both duplicitous and not using much of her head there. It doesn't exactly take a rocket scientist to know that, if you're going to run a scam adjacent grift like this, you don't sell the items locally. I think they teach that in chicanery 101. In other words, there's no upside to continuing this friendship. She's morally gray at absolute best, and she's got room temperature IQ to boot. Nothing but pain ahead. Consider her dumped. Second reply. Not the idiot, but you should be mad at her for selling them. She used you. The original poster replies. The thing is, she didn't just sell the hats and scarves. She sold them and passed them off as her own creation. To me, that doesn't seem like something someone who is in need of money would do. More replies. It sounds like she was planning on using you and your work to build a business with all credit going to herself. Especially since she asked for more scarves and hats. 
She is mad because she got caught and is likely trying to guilt you into giving her more items so her customers don't get suspicious that she has nothing to give them. Original poster. You're a really kind person and certainly not the idiot.